A Man for All Seasons is about St. Thomas More, the patron saint of politicians and lawyers. And it takes place in the historical era of the 1500s, when Thomas More goes from being a sort of neglected lawyer um, to rising into prominence to be the chief chancellor of the realm. He's the second man in the whole realm, and he's a man of deep conscience and deep learning and deep humor. He was known as the merriest man of England. He was good friends with King Henry VIII. They used to walk around his garden with their arms around each other's necks and just sort of like being good old buddies and pals. But when Henry VIII decided he was going to break the church and start his own church, named himself the head of the church in England, uh, Thomas More, who was, in addition to a very good lawyer, uh, a very deep Catholic, knew that he couldn't, either in law or in conscience, go along with the king. He was eventually framed and he was put to death. Um, what's really beautiful about the play is it shows very much that he is a man of wit. He refuses to break the law when he doesn't need to. He doesn't say anything against the king's title or against the king's claims or his marriage, but he also doesn't uh, give any consent to it. He was known as a man for all seasons um, because he was a man of great wit and of great mercy. And it's beautiful that he didn't have to identify himself with any of the extremes uh, of his time. The only thing he was extreme about was his love of God. That was the only thing that was worth giving up everything for, and that is exactly what he did. His final words at the scaffold are, uh, I die the king's uh, loyal subject and God's first. Many people say it's but, but it's actually and, because you can do both if you are a man for all seasons.